Hi there. Now for this question, we're given that particle P has mass 3 kilograms and particle Q has mass m kilograms. The particles are moving in opposite directions along a smooth horizontal plane when they collide directly. Immediately before the collision, the speed of P is 4 meters per second and the speed of Q is 3 meters per second. In the collision, the direction of motion of P is unchanged and the direction of motion of Q is reversed. Immediately after the collision, the speed of P is 1 meter per second and the speed of Q is 1.5 meters per second. And we've got two parts here. Now in part A, we've got to find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on P in the collision for three marks. And in part B, find the value of M for three marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done so already, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, I'll give you the numerical answers to part A and B. Part A, the impulse is 9 newton seconds. And for part B, the value of M, well, it's 2. So if you'd like to see how I got the answers, then I'll take you through the work solutions. Well, first of all, what I'd want to do is draw a sketch. So we'd have our two spheres, 3 kilograms and m kilograms, and the 3 kilogram one is P, and the m kilogram one is Q. And then we look at the motion before impact, so we'll just put that there, and the motion after impact. This is a fairly standard diagram, so you should be familiar with this kind of thing. We're told that they are moving in opposite directions, and immediately before the collision, the speed of P is 4 meters per second, and the speed of Q is 3 meters per second. So we'll have P then going at 4 meters per second towards the right, and we'll have Q moving to the left then at 3 meters per second. And then we're told that in the collision, the direction of motion of P is unchanged and the direction of motion of Q is reversed. So immediately after the collision, the speed of P is one meter per second, so it was still moving in the same direction, so I have that as one meter per second, but the direction of Q is reversed, and it moves off at 1.5 meters per second, so just put that in there. So that's your fairly standard diagram then. Now, we've got to find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on P in the collision. So P receives an impulse towards the left when it hits Q. And I'll illustrate that with the letter I. Now there'll be an equal and opposite impulse exerted on the particle Q. So that will act then to the right. Now, if we're to get that impulse, we should be familiar with the fact that impulse is equal to the change in momentum. Momentum, remember, is given by mass times velocity. So impulse is the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Normally, it wouldn't matter which particle we work with. But if we're to get the magnitude of I, I can see that we have to work with particle P because we haven't got the mass m, okay, of particle Q. So if we just say consider P, then in this part here, let's just label it part A. We'll consider P. It's a good idea just to say which particle you're working with in problems like this. Now we're dealing with vector quantities. Impulse is a vector quantity as well as momentum. So we need to set up a positive sense. And I always find this is the place that most people tend to fall down on. So I'm going to select positive sense to the left, purely because I acts towards the left. So if that's the case, we've got positive I then for the impulse equals the final momentum. 
So that's going to be the mass, which is 3 kilograms, multiplied by the velocity. Now, the final velocity is 1 meter per second, but in the opposite sense to my positive direction. So it's going to be minus 1. OK. Then we subtract the initial momentum. So it's going to be the mass, which is 3, multiplied by the velocity, which again is going to be in the negative sense. So that's going to be minus 4. OK, so it's very important then to get this positive sense here. So what do we end up with? Well, we've got minus 3 plus 12. Let's just put it in, minus 3 plus 12. And that comes out then at 9, and so the units are newton seconds. 9 newton seconds then is the magnitude of the impulse. Okay, so that's part A then. Moving on, at this point you might even want to pause the video again to find the value of m. So how do we do part B? Well, for part B, we could consider Q actually. We could consider Q now that we know the magnitude of the impulse and use this equation again to find m. There is another way we could do it as well. We could use the conservation of linear momentum. And I'll show you both methods so you can compare them. So first of all then, let's have a look at considering the particle Q. This is the way I would prefer to do it for this particular problem. I think it's less work, okay? But as I say, you can compare. So we're again, we're dealing with vector quantities and I'm going to need a positive sense. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, but it's a good idea to put it in the, the positive sense in the direction of the impulse, which then for this question is to the right. So we'll have that as the positive sense. And so therefore, we've got the impulse, which we now know is 9 newton seconds. So therefore, we've got 9 equals the final momentum, so that's going to be the mass, times the velocity. Well, the velocity is 1.5, and it's in the positive sense, so we've got that. Minus the mass again, m, multiplied by u, the initial velocity. Well, this is a speed of 3 meters per second, but it's towards the left, so the velocity is in the opposite sense to my positive direction, so it's going to be minus 3. And so, therefore, we've got 9 equals 1.5m plus 3m. So we've got 4.5m here. And so, therefore, 9 equals 4.5m. And if I divide now both sides by 4.5, 9 divided by 4.5 tells us that it follows that m equals 2. Okay, so that's the way I would prefer to do it. But there was an alternative way that we could have done it. So we'll just rule that off there. The alternative way was to consider the conservation of linear momentum. So we'll just put here, consider the conservation of linear momentum. I'm assuming that you're familiar with this. Okay, that is the momentum before impact, the total momentum before impact equals the total momentum after impact, providing no external forces act on the system. So if we consider conservation of linear momentum, again, we need a positive sense. It doesn't really matter which way we do it, okay? So I'm going to have positive towards the right, okay? Do experiment with this. Have it to the left and see that if you get the same answer. You should do. So total momentum before impact, it will be the mass of P, which is 3 kilograms, multiplied by its velocity, which was positive 4. It's in the positive sense there, so we've got 3 times 4. Plus the initial momentum of Q, so its mass is M. And its speed is 3 meters per second to the left, but its velocity then will be minus 3. Okay. And this is the total momentum before impact, and it equals the total momentum after impact. So for P again, it'll be the mass of 3 multiplied by positive 1. Okay. 
and then to this we add the momentum of Q which would be the mass m multiplied by positive 1.5 so solving this equation now what have we got we've got 12 here so we've got 12 minus 3m equals 3 plus 1.5m and I can see that if we were to subtract 3 from both sides and add 3m to both sides we're going to have 12 minus 3 which is going to be 9 is equal to 3m plus 1.5m 4.5m so we're back at the same equation we had here so dividing both sides by 4.5 tells us that m equals 2. So I hope you've been able to follow my methods here and that brings us now to the end of this question.